So thank you again for your patience. We're going to be starting up here, the tour. So as we uh, see here, we're flying over this uh, beautiful jewel, uh, the Earth, uh, its location in the Milky Way galaxy and in the solar system. Uh, it is in the perfect location. The magnetic field and atmosphere uh, that serve as a dual shield, uh, it's really not a coincidence that they're all set uh, in the perfect location, in the perfect place by the finger of the Creator. And we're going to travel to a location which is actually located, uh, maybe not far from yourself, uh, it's actually in London, England. Now, this location is the British Museum, the first national public museum uh, of the world, and it was uh, actually founded in 1753. And um, it opened its doors in 1759. Uh, and interestingly, it has a beautiful entrance. And if you're in England, what you're going to probably be doing is you're going to uh, probably have uh, some good walking shoes, some fish and chips you may be enjoying as well as you uh, head into uh, the museum. Um, we, we noticed that this is the entrance of the museum. Uh, now the museum focuses in on enlightenment, ideas and values, uh, critical scrutiny of all assumptions. It's open to debate, scientific research, progress and tolerance as um, uh, these, these points have, have marked this museum since uh, its foundation. Um, and it has an, a curiosity uh, of, of the world, this museum, the pieces that we find in here highlight that. So uh, this is where we are. We're in uh, Britain, the British Museum. It's one of the biggest footprints uh, in all of, of England. And um, let's see if we can explore as we open uh, the doors here, head, in to, head inside. Uh, there we notice that we're going to find a variety of items that highlight divine victories. Um, so we're going to travel the world because we're virtual. So we have that opportunity to do that, travel the world. And um, our first point uh, we find in the museum, it's um, in highlight highlighting Noah. Now notice here. As uh, we notice to the left, uh, we, we, we find a piece that highlights the life of Noah, but we also notice another piece. Uh, it's a tablet uh, which has some interesting writing. Uh, maybe you can't make it out because we don't speak that language, but we're going to get a little bit more detail. Now, the first one, the Noah cameo, uh, it's actually from 1450 to 1499. Now, this is an onyx piece. It's from the Middle Ages, the 15th century. It helps to demonstrate uh, the high quality of items that they have in this museum. Now, it's pretty accurate as well in regards to the Bible account. We see eight individuals. We also see here an angel. But as we dive in, we notice something. If we, if we look a little closer. Now, we're going to get a little closer than you can get in the museum in this tour. Notice here the L-A-V-M-E-D which stands for uh, Lorenzo II of Magnifico de Medici. So uh, he was from Florence, and uh, this piece was his from the years 1469 to 92. Now, it's interesting that it highlights this uh, biblical piece. And uh, when we think about that account, we think about what occurred, right? The seven days before the flood, what occurred? Well, Noah... Uh, he went, he started gathering all of the animals. Uh, there was 1,300,000 species of animals uh, during that time on the earth. And you can just imagine all the animals, right? The, the lions, the tigers, the bears, some may say, oh my. Uh, but uh, imagine that opportunity that he had to bring all of them in. Now think about this as well. Uh, on the earth, uh, there are a variety of species, 240 
thousand or twenty four thousand better said amphibians and uh, ten thousand mammals and um, um, as well as birds and reptiles, some of these animals that we're uh, giving you numbers on, they did not have to go into the ark. But we know that the big as well as not so big, they went and they were probably asking themselves, who is this Noah? Who is this man? Now, what we're going to do is just get a visual of uh, what were some of the animals that he would have uh, been bringing into the ark in the following video. Now we find ourselves examining this uh, scriptural account. There it says in Genesis 7, 11, it says, uh, In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month of the 17th day of the month, on that day all the springs of the vast watery deep burst open, and the floodgates of the heavens were opened. So um, we do have a poll. We wanted to find out if you could uh, help us out. Let me see if uh, we can share this poll with you. When would the second month be on our calendar? <clears throat> All right, we have a few that are chiming in. Very good, very good. Awesome. So majority, um, I'm going to say more than 50% were able to chime in. So the actual answer is, you guessed it, very good. It was October, November. That's 48% that actually uh, got that one there. And so we're actually gonna just take a look at it by traveling uh, virtually to the location that the ark actually landed. So we have uh, a little help here on the top here of this mountain here. And um, so this is where the ark would have landed. Um, um, many have found the truth in regards to this account uh, in Mesopotamia, Asia, Australia, the Pacific Islands, uh, Indian tribes, North and South Americas, the Greeks, the Romans, the Scandinavians, the Africans, uh, tribes, 
They widely speak about this account or similar accounts uh, to uh, this account regards to Noah in the flood and the ark. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to just go back to our museum uh, and now we find ourselves examining another piece. So we've already examined uh, this piece from the 15th century uh, to the left, the Noah cameo, but we're going to examine as well this flood tablet. Now, what do we find here on this flood tablet? Now, what we find is some writing. It's in the Arcadian language. Now, this individual by the name of George Smith uh, he worked there at the library many moons ago, 1872 to be exact. And he was able to read this language. And when he was a re reading uh, this uh, language, uh, it's actually the Assyrian uh, version of the Old um, uh, Testament flood story that identifies uh, an account that's similar to that of Noah's, but it was a different individual. Um, and supposedly he survived the flood within seven days. Now, when George Smith read it, uh, he was so shocked that he found this written on this tablet that he started to jump around in the museum. He started to begin to undress himself. Now, we don't know exactly why. Uh, maybe he thought there was a flood that was going to come, so he was getting ready to swim. But it does give a lot of validity to the fact that this account did occur. Um, now, we know that there were eight faithful individuals that survived the flood, and this was a victory. And so, it's going to give us just a little visual in connection with where we are in, in time in history. So, we're traveling here and we've just now covered this time here, this time stamp, uh, 2000 BC. And this is just one of the victories that we found uh, where faithful individuals were able to survive the flood. And it's actually the date that we're focusing in on is 2420 BCE. And um, let's see if we could uh, get a little bit more background though. In regards to this individual Noah. Uh, we know he had sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Uh, they had sons. A total of 70 families uh, sprung forth from uh, this family. And um, we also know that they had grandsons, um, grandchildren. Now, one of them in particular uh, was a, a very important piece in our travels, in our tour today. And he goes by the name of Nimrod. Yep, you remember him. And um, let's see if we could find a little bit in regards to this individual as regards to our divine victories. Now, part uh, number two, it speaks about, it's a piece in the museum that speaks about a building block from Babel. Now, as we head over to uh, Genesis. To enjoy part two, feel free to check out our other video there on YouTube. It's episode two, and it will be discussing a little bit more in regards to other pieces that we'll find in the British Museum, especially the building block of Babel. So we hope to see you there. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave all of your comments below as well. And subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you'd like to support us, feel free to send us over a coffee if you like buymeacoffee.com forward slash NY trips AW. See you on episode two.